Good evening and welcome to Washington Week, Easter weekend edition. It's appropriate that we'll talk tonight about the Bible, as well as the dispositively powerful force uh, money plays in politics. Maybe we'll call this the Render Unto Caesar episode of Washington Week, or maybe not. We'll just have to see. Uh, whatever the case, we have a lot to cover, and joining me to discuss the campaign and its many permutations are Adam Harris and Mark Leibovich, who are my colleagues at The Atlantic. Nia Malika Henderson is a senior political analyst for CNN and a political and policy columnist at Bloomberg Opinion. And Jeff Mason is a White House correspondent for Reuters. Um, welcome, all of you. Thank you for being here. Mark, I want to start with you. You wrote about uh, Joe Lieberman, uh, uh, who died uh, this week. And I, I wanted to ask you about uh, Lieberman and his role in, in, in politics. But I also want to talk about the what I'm thinking of as the demise of the centrists, in a way. Um, Lieberman is part of a group of politicians, many senators, um, who no, really kind of no longer exist. Joe Manchin, Mitt Romney are people who are still in the, in the Senate but are, but are leaving. And what I'm talking about are conservative Democrats and what we would one, once call moderate Republicans. Right. I, Lieberman really was a symbol of, a, of an era that is long gone in politics. Absolutely, both you know, in politics but also in style. I mean, he had a real warm personality and was actually kind of a throwback to a much less angry Vintage of politics. I mean, Joe Lieberman was an extremely uh, generous and decent, but also very stubborn and you know infuriating to many people. Person, I mean, he he was not terribly popular in the Democratic Party. He didn't even you know get his party's nomination when he ran for re-election in 2006, and he ran as an independent. So yeah, he had a lot of enemies, and yet there was nothing besieged about him, which is a contrast to much of what you see today in politics. Right, right, right. It's just a it's it's an issue. I mean, are there any People like Lieberman left. Can you think of anyone offhand? Nia? You know, listen, it's hard to think of anyone uh, who is that model of politics now. And then you, know, you, you kind of think about one of the things he wanted to do with no labels and the third party. Uh, and the fate of that right now is essentially that there's nobody who wants to be, uh, you know, the, the person who's going to run on the no labels uh, party. There is such partisanship. Uh, and it, listen, I mean, it's based on policy, right? Um, and part of, I think, the impulse over these last uh, years, particularly in, in Trump's version of the Republican Party, you know, that party is much more radical, much meaner, uh, and this kind of politics of combat and personal destruction uh, really rules the day, particularly, I think, uh, on the Republican side. And so you've had some of that um, kind of seep over, I think, into politics more generally. Right. Um, speaking of polarization and anger, I want to talk about um, Ronna McDaniel hmm. um, and the revolt of the anchors. That's what I'm calling it. Nobody else is, call <laughs> Nobody else is like calling it that. Yeah, The Revolt of... A movie that you wouldn't go see, <laughs> right, actually. Yeah. Um, but The Revolt of the Anchors. Um, and, and, you know, we, we saw this incident where she was hired uh, and then fired by NBC, the former RNC chair. Um, why did... Um, Jeff, why did, why, why did... Why did Ronna McDaniel find herself such the object of, of derision uh, among journalists? Well, I think it was not certainly that... She's a Republican, but and not even necessarily because she has ties to Trump, but because she had such direct and specific involvement in um, trying to overturn the the 2020 election. Right. And that is that is certainly what the anchors at MSNBC objected to, and why people were saying that they were so flummoxed by that hire. Right. Right. Adam, this is a person who literally tried to convince canvassers um, to not certify the results in the Michigan. Race, for instance, um, and 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 so the the, the question is, and I, this is sort of a, I don't want to turn this into a journalism ethics seminar, um, but but this is where is the line? I mean, a lot of a lot of people hire ex politicos of various stripes to do commentary on politics, but is this was this just a, a kind of a, a, an almost allergic reaction on the part of journalism? Yeah, I mean, we've spent the last four years effectively saying that we shouldn't try to normalize the events of January 6th, that we shouldn't try to normalize the behavior of fundamentally trying to overturn an election. And I think there was this thought that by making this hire, this is mainstreaming a person who had a significant role um, in the, the events of that day. Um, and, and to do that would be to sort of abdicate our responsibility and fundamental um, responsibility to democracy and the truth. Mark. You're the anthropologist of Washington, D.C.'s mores. Um, 
Mores. Mores. Mm -hmm. Mores. Um, w was this an effort by NBC, or, or was this an indication that NBC itself thought that Trump is a is the likely winner, and mm -hmm. therefore they're trying to make their peace with the new politics or the new old politics? It, it could be. I mean, it, I, full disclosure, I'm a uh, political contributor to MSNBC, but I have nothing to do with this. Um, <laughs> you were here the whole time. I, I was here the whole time, yeah. But no, um, I, I do think that this, I mean, it was, it was a clumsy effort, certainly, but I, I do think it is an effort to try to figure out a way or figure out a kind of person who has some kind of viability. Obviously, Ronald McDaniel is not that kind of person. Um, but I do think that if there is a line, yeah, January 6th, election denialism. And if you'll recall, back at the time, there were a lot of sponsors, there were a lot of fundraisers that were not touching these people. There were a lot of people within the Republican Party saying, this is, you know, what happened, we just want to run as far away from it as possible. Many of them have run back, right? And I think this was an example of journalism kind of locking arms, or at least the reporters or the, the you know, the actual journalists at, yeah. at MSNBC and NBC saying, look, we are not going to be part of this rehabilitation and we don't want any part of it.